The Great Search brought to you by Fruit and DigiKey. Every single week later, the user powers of engineering to show you, yes, you, how to find stuff on digikey.com. Thanks, DigiKey. Lady what are you searching for this week? Did you know there's a part shortage? I did. I do, do. Okay, well, today is another adventure in part shortage land. Uh, so this week, um, I'm looking for some alternatives uh, to make to, to use for the very popular MCP 23017 GPIO expander. Uh, it's a 16 uh, pin GPIO ex expander over I squared C, which I really like. I've been using it for like over a decade, um, but it's totally unavailable. We have some on order. Not sure what I'm going to get them. Um, again, a lot of stuff from Microchip uh, placed orders a year ago and they've been pushed out. Um, so uh, let's go to the overhead, sorry, the computer, and I'll show the um, what I would like to replace. Okay, so what's interesting is you can get the dip version, but what I really want is this is a very popular breakout, which, uh, you know, is great because it has um, 16 GPIO expansion, address, interrupt output. Um, you know, it's a very, it's a very easy and low cost breakout uh, that over I squared C you can add 16 GPIOs. And here's the things that I like about the MCP 23017 and 23018. Um, sorry, 23008. But specifically the 017, it's 16 bits, sweet. IRQ, so you don't have to constantly pull it when a button is pressed. Built-in pull-up resistors, which is big because there's the other GPIO expander that we stocked, the, the AW9523. It doesn't have built-in pull-ups and it's a little bit annoying. Um, and I like that it runs on three volts or five volts, which is very handy because you can kind of use it a little bit as a level shifter a teeny bit. You know, you can use it with 3 volts, but use it to power uh, LEDs or send signals to 5 volt servos. Um, so, it's sorry, not servos. Uh, people use it for rotary encoders. Um, so I do like uh, I do like the MCP2317. If I could get more, I would just use that. Unavailable. So let's find I squared C, 3 or 5 volt power and logic, 16 GPIO, I switch expander um, with interrupt uh, output is uh, capability and ideally a small package like this so I can make a similar breakout board maybe one that's even drop in pin out compatible uh, that people can uh, swap out um, while I wait for the 23017s to appear um, okay so uh, I did want to show yeah you know there's no 23017s this is the chip I would normally purchase and um, it's like, you know, 2023, maybe I'll get some in 2022. Um, but I, I, I need them sooner than that. So let's go to IO Expander. So I just went to the uh, same topic because I'm like, I might as well be there. And then let's look for our standard, uh, you know, we want um, active products. And I want 16 IO, although I might do a little bit more because, you know, Look, it's 20, it's probably still fine. I'm going to not select this like eight output only, input only, like I want them to be all GPIOs. Okay, so I'm going to apply. Uh, next up, the interface, uh, I want I squared C. You know, I squared C sometimes has multiple names. Sometimes it's called TWI, two wire interface, two wire serial, SM bus. Uh, it's all going to be the same. Um, and then uh, voltage supply, I'll, I'll pick that. I want, I want the surface mount, that's important to me. It has to be easy for me to pick in place. And I do want interrupt output. And then uh, the voltage supply, you know, I want, uh, hold on, I want, I don't remember how to select, sorry, option click to select all the ones. I want it to make sure it goes from uh, three volts to five volts. So I'm going to pick these and I'm gonna skip this one because I want it to also cover three volts. And let's see what we got. Okay, so actually there's a lot of options and there's quite a few that are in stock, which is cool. Um, so let's look at only ones that are in stock now. And um, there's a quite few from NXP. I've used NXP expanders. They're great. Analog Maxim, also great. Let's. Uh, I want to keep get something that's within the price range. Remember the MCP 
2317 was like a dollar 25 per so I want to try to keep it um, at that range so I like to view prices at a thousand because the prices for one piece is always like it doesn't really give you a good idea of how much it's gonna cost some some chip companies like the cost of one is basically the same as the cost of a thousand some you get pretty big discounts so uh, go to a thousand and then we'll see what's up uh, so there's a couple good options um, the PCA 95 35 is available, comes in a couple different packages. Um, but the first one that came up was actually, uh, looks pretty good. So this is the SX1503, um, 16 channel. It's got uh, 28 QFN, so I know it's about the same size, which is kind of nice. Uh, the pricing is really good. It's about uh, 80 cents a piece. And um, then I looked up the data sheet and um, you know, yeah, they're like, you can use this with 3-volt logic and then controlling 5-volt LEDs. Um, there's a, a reset pin as well as an interrupt pin. There's only one interrupt um, compared to the MCP2317, but I think that's okay. Um, lots of GPIO. Uh, they have versions with 8-channel, 4-channel. You know, you, you want to have more pins, less pins. And um, another thing that I wanted to check for is uh, pull-up capability, because that was like the thing that I really wanted. Yes, yeah, so programmable, uh, true bidirectional style I.O., so it means input and output, and programmable pull-ups and pull-downs, so, um, and all 5.5 volt uh, compatible I.O.s. So this is actually a really good, um, really good option. Uh, it's, it basically has even more capability than the MCP 23017 because it actually can do pull downs as well. The MCP can only do pull ups. Um, and I, I'm willing to kind of look beyond uh, the fact that there is only one IRQ. I think that's not a big deal. Um, and then I don't know if there's address. Okay, yeah, there's one address pin. So you can have uh, two of them. Not as many as the um, MCP, but again, you know, it's available and uh, I'm willing. Oh, wait, sorry, that's the, uh, that's the 013. Yeah, so there's, ooh, I might not be able to change the address. Hold on a second, because the 15, the SX1503, see if I can find the pinout for that one. Block diagram. Okay, so this is the four channel, eight channel. 16 channel. So it looks like there's GPIOs and there's a reset, but there's no address. So this is a fixed address. So yeah, that's, that's the one downside. Um, you only get one, one address pin on uh, OX20 hex. But you know, I think it still might be good enough for most people if, if you don't need to chain multiples and then maybe like this could be useful for people until I can get more of those MCP chips in. Um, you know, you need more GPIO expansion. I don't know. We'll get a Grand Central. Well, you can't actually get Grand Central because I can't get those chips either. And that's what it's like living in a chip shortage. Um, but I'm still going to make a breakout with this. I think it'll still be useful for 75, 80% of people who don't need to chain multiple boards together. Um, and we'll see it in Native Food Shop in a couple months. And that's this week's Great Search.